Last week on Wondering Monster, our scurvy ridden crew investigated the listing lighthouse on Long Watch. Inside, they found a scavenger trapped inside a barrel being attacked by a zombie. After liberating the zombie's head from their shoulder, they nailed Ralph, who told the crew about a strange ghost ship filled with the angry dead. Our crew sought to turn the lighthouse into a crab signal to beam Masatan's icon across the ocean. But danger worked in the cupola, and Checkmate was viciously ripped apart. As the crew fled the tower, they watched their former companion rise as a zombie to forever guard the crab signal. Upon returning to Bastion, Fastness decided to donate all of their funded ash straight into the local water table. All praise the crab god and roll initiative! So you find yourself back in the tavern. Glowbones has barricaded the front door as there's just wanton violence and bloodshed that is running through the streets. You can hear this kind of cacophony of shrieks as people are caught in the thralls of ash psychosis or the shrieks of people uh, that are being ripped apart by those people that are in the thralls of ash psychosis. It is utter pandemonium outside and at time to time you can hear a body slam heavily into the wall of the tavern, shaking tables and rattling things. You can hear muscle it's going off, the sound of bayonets sawing through bone, and just all kinds of terrible sounds that are all, in one way, wonderful pans to the power of Basaton. So as you're hunkering down in the tavern, um, you notice uh, the people that have um, kind of congregated here for safety. A couple of faces that you maybe not recognize quite so well, but everyone here being a loyal adherent of Bossaton to weather out the ash storm. And one Go Bones. Would you mind giving me another, uh, another mug of, uh, rum? A little more, uh, gunpowder in this serving, please, if you will. Low bones. As John, John fervently tries to remember what Fasta's, uh, accent actually sounds like. It can <laughs> migrate. That's pretty close. Yeah, that so... wasn't far off. Uh... Gravelly, but a little upper crusty is what I'd say it sounded like. So you're you're getting there. All right, we'll get there. So as uh, you know, Globone stopped for a second, overly is zealously polishing the same tanker he's been nervously polishing to the point that it is gleaming. Nods pours a long draft of grog, and uh, when you are distracted by another thump. Uh, against the side, he adds his gunpowder straight into your mug and stirs it with a dirty fingernail uh, and hands it over to you. Yeah, as he smiles, you can just see like the rotten like roots of all of his teeth, um, and it's kind of a, a pretty gnarly sight. Is Goldbones uh, a faithful, or is he just a civilian? Uh, he's a faithful. All of the, the yeah, everyone basically in this tavern here is an adherent of Bassetan. Great. Cool. Thank you. A great winnowing of the uh, faithless, as it were, with your ash donation. Have, have, have we gotten Bridget's character out of the barrel yet? No, I'm still nope. in here. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I know someone has got more rum, and I, rum is what I want. So I'm gonna just, I I knock on the side of the barrel. <laughs> uh, hey, you in there? Yeah, you, you you decent? You decent? Because I'm opening up. I'm opening yeah, just, it. Just open it. Open it. So I pop the top on the barrel. I'm just like, hello, and I just hand my cup down. All right. Um, I'm gonna just let it dip into the water directly. I'm like standing waist deep in this barrel. Um. I'm coming out. I I made a friend in here. Um, I, is it cool if he comes? Comes I, for a bit. Yeah. I don't like new people. He might not like me, or she. Ah, uh, I've already Burn gone off. off on the wrong foot. I'm on the wrong foot already. 
Don't be an asshole. They might be faithful. All the Bassetons' um, children are welcome here. At that point, clambers out of the barrel a um, armored but slightly cadaverous looking, um, very bedraggled but very uh, like in, like I have one of those hats with like a big ass feather. Like the feather is like an ostrich feather. Mm. You know the ones I'm talking about. Yeah, like a truly ridiculous hat. Um, like a puss in boots hat, you know. Uh, that's the kind kind of guy I am. That's the outfit I'm rocking. And I say, um, hello. I'm not gonna do that voice all night, but just imagine. <laughs> no, um, you have to do it. <laughs> you can You're doing go, a Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, it's, I guess so. <laughs> fun fact: that hat is called a cavalier, which I had to look up because a I'm cavalier. also I'm also wearing Perfect. one. So, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. That's yeah, how we met um, in the barrel. Uh, is we were both talking about our hats. So. <laughs> Comparing <laughs> haberdashers, yeah. Like, do you get your ridiculously long feather from a long feather company? No, I get mine from short feathers. Maybe I should go to long feathers for the long feather. I've been going to Hank's discount feathers, uh. so. <laughs> Look, they're not the best feathers, but they're the best value in town. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right, I am a swashbuckler, and uh, I may or may not be uh, wearing this armor to conceal a mortal wound that uh, I am being kept from dying from by my faith in Basaton, the clacky Basaton, whose armored shell is much like my armored shell, and much like my armored shell hides soft, soft meat inside. So that's me. I'm Hornswoggle. And I'm here to shoot muskets and swing around. A, I think I have a saber. So, nice. Pashki, this should interest you. Hang on. Let me find out exactly what type of sword I have. Someone said saber. Mm -hmm. What's up? Mm -hmm. Let me see. You've been waiting for someone uh, to ask. Yeah, what I have. Then? Always. <clears throat> oh, you're going to like this. It's not a saber. I have a rapier. Oh. You know, so, <clears throat> you'll know the only problem with uh, what we've done here my friends, is that now we're out of ash. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, did you have enough ash? There's plenty of ash in the water. Yes. Well, what you're fa Man, I've lost this accent completely. What you're failing? Nope, that's Irish. Good God. <laughs> See, this is the price of ash. If you do so much ash, it just rots out your vocal cords. Children, not even once. I've eaten so much that ass, it's turned me into an Irishman. I don't know what that means. Um, it sounds accurate, uh, though. I'm on board. All right, my friends. The problem is, now that we've utilized our bounty of ash when we go to the next island to um spread Basaton's glory we'll need to find more i don't know i've, I've heard that that stuff if it, oh excuse me i don't know i've heard that if you do that stuff it'll melt the front of your brain and you'll lose one point from each statistic I don't know about that. See this? Points at third eye. Worked out great for me. I say the only way to know is to do it. Go ahead. Pulls out reserve ash from pocket. Be somebody. Come on. <laughs> bip, bip, no, bip, not this bip, time. Bip, <laughs> not this time. Bip, bip. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not this What's time. the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found out the worst that could happen. First fucking hand, I found out the worst that can happen. I'm going to record this in sense of using Listeners. drugs. Yeah. This is a new so, character, new I mean, vehicle. You guys know that IRL Charles, like IRL Charles would go back to the stove after being burned, but Charles, who controls the character, is thinking. You know, uh, losing that one point off of every single stat really fucking sucked, and I wound up dying, so I don't think I'm going to screw with it. That's, yeah, I'm going Nance again. Uh, I'm just saying no. Ah, uh, boo. <laughs> well, well as you... I'm going to be drinking plenty, so, I mean, my character is like, 
canonically drunk all the time. So that that should that should you know qualify me for the cool kids club. So Pete Studman, the man who had first brought you that kind of giant uh, barrel of ash at the very beginning of things, also kind of with that uh, mysterious two stamps on the side of the barrel, um, shakes out of the last of his uh, barrel onto the table and draws some lines as he sees your hand full of ash burn out. He looks at you and goes, I'll go bump to bump with you. And he uh, makes a large <laughs> smile. He's missing about six of his teeth. That's two more from the last time you saw him. Uh, but uh, he seems to um, kind of have that bravado of who can do the, the bigger line. I've, I've played this game before. All right. Yeah, I've so, hung out with that guy before. Uh, yeah, so Burnout would go over to him. All right, I get, I'm ready to go. And uh, I would like to roll a deception check because what my plan is is to put my my ash right here on my hand, and when I go to do this, where I act like I'm going to snort it, I'm going to like open my thumb up so it drops into my palm. I, I like that. Uh, so I mean, I think that would be kind of like an agility check since you're doing a sleight of hand. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I can't see you. Oh, that's a 17, not just a 7. F yeah. All right. So that's plus 1 for my agility. So 18. So you have your fist full of ash, and uh, Pete has his line on the table. So you pocket your hand of ash, and you just watch Pete just take the largest bump of ash you've seen anyone do. He's snorting so much ash through one nostril, it's trickling out the other. And you just see that his skin seems to get more ashen gray through the process. Who would like to roll D20 to see what happens to poor old Pete Studman? Me. Three. I got a 16. So whichever one of those is fun. Well, you know, it's so much ash. Why not both? Because he did enough <laughs> skin of those to try to impress burnout so oh that's great that's a fantastic combination so as he is sorting that line the ash is coming out his other nostril along with copious amounts of blood it doesn't seem to stop him because he goes through the entire bumps locked eyes the entire time with burnout and you see like his pupils <laughs> one is both contracting and the other one is dilating so much his eye just looks black and you notice that the veins in his skull begin to turn well, a little bit black mm -hmm. and he begins to foam at the mouth it is a froth of ash and blood, and he you see his muscles begin to twitch. He full on goes into a 28 days later zombie mode as he becomes infected and dies from the sheer amount of damage as an NPC can take from uh, rolling a three on the ash chart and moves double his speed from the result of 16 that... Uh, Jude had rolled. So basically, you're all partying, and all of a sudden, Sudman just turns into this wild, ravenous beast. Uh, Great so good job, guys. Hell Bastaton. Hell Bastaton. The first thing he does is he lashes out at the nearest person, uh, which is Ralph. Uh, launches out a hand, and you hear uh, the sound of cartilage crinkling and then crunching and then snapping as Roth just gurgles in his throat and flails uh, helplessly as he is just utterly crushed by Studman. He turns and he roars and he takes a swipe at Burnout. I uh, he throws himself at you and takes a swipe. You can see that his hand has begun to turn black and it's progressively going from his fingertips up his arm. So roll your defense. That's not a pleasant. Um I have a 
do I roll my okay? So devil's luck. We yes, do that everyone gets their devil's luck back at the beginning of this. Correct. Cool. I would like to utilize one of my devil's lucks to re-roll that because um no. Because no. <laughs> okay, and your second roll is also a no, is what I'm hearing. Let's move on. Next scene. <laughs> no even Baltus Burger bargaining. That's bad. <laughs> All right. So he throws himself at you mm-hmm. and he slices his fingers through your meat as if somehow they've always known how to part skin from muscle. And it rips three points of flesh from your shoulder. Oh, and he immediately just shoves it into his mouth and he just chews on his whole hand with your flesh in his hand, like chewing down <laughs> to his bones. Uh, top of the initiative. So we will have uh, Faustus followed by um, R- R- Horn Swoggle, Jude. Burnout, and then we'll add glow bones at the end of that. Okay. <clears throat> um. I am going to. Uh. <clears throat> I. Um. I okay. I hold up my hunting knife and my parrot, uh, which can mimic human speech but only maniacal laughter. Mm. Um, grabs the <laughs> knife and flies above, uh, summon and just drops the knife point first down. I, we'll see how much damage that does. This dropping a knife is probably not the most effective thing since you're not putting too much force other than two feet worth of gravity, but go ahead and roll a strength check for your parrot. Um, okay. I, I did roll a 17. Uh, but right. I'm betting I'm betting my parrot has like a negative two strength. <laughs> I'm fully imagining that that's going to be D2 worth of damage since it is a parrot. Yep, uh, that's a one. That's a one. So it sinks into his shoulder and he turns, as he turns to look at it, it shaves off the tip of his nose. It You see like just mud ash just pour from his nose as it just flops to the ground. The what are you going to do? Cackling maniacally the entire time. Oh, I fully bet. And probably uh, some pretty good sea curses in with it. Is your character uh, doing anything also with that? Or is that your nope. full I'm, I am I am not a fighter. I'm a preacher. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, all right. Why don't you show them what you got, Hornswoggle? All right. Uh, what I got is my finely crafted uh, rapier, which I am going to um, stick the pointy end into him. Nice. Uh, so, That's yeah. That's the best end see. to use. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, mm. it, it is a pretty good plan. Um, <clears throat> let's see how I do. My strength is not quite as bad as it was yesterday, but still nothing great. Uh, I will take it. That's an 18 minus 1 is 17. That is fantastic. You instantly kind of get that surge of adrenaline and you throw yourself forward with that rapier. Yeah! And uh, I will, um, let's see, do one, I think it's V8 of damage? Yeah. Uh, One point. No, no, wait, wait. Yeah, that's one. I was just checking to make sure it wasn't a seven. That's one. Wow. So it is a this wonderful, beautiful French Indies officer like weapon and his total death dealer and you just nick him. You just basically give him a new piercing like in and out, just through the skin. <laughs> he turns and he looks at you and as he does he like runs his face across that dagger on his shoulder, slicing another like sandwich meat slice worth of cheek and just growls at you. This total low pitch sound that Studman has never made in his life. Um, 
Jude. Well, um, Steamboat Willie. Wait, it's, or, Jude, it's Jude, Jude's turn. Jude. What up, Bridget. Steamboat? I'm not Jude. I'm Esther. Yeah. Esther. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got my <laughs> my tabs have been crossed, and uh, that explains it. Um, if uh, Esther, if you will, my pardon. I, I'm pulling out my gun. And anyway, I start blasting. Um, just, yeah. And I pull out my gun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 2d6. Okay, nice seven. Wait, seven for your attack roll? Yeah, it's 2d6, right? For mine, D20. For it's it's d twenty, and so if you oh, are firing with your, if you it's are a, firing, it's, a, hmm? it's an eighteen. It's an eighteen that totally hits. Now it's your two d six for your damage, correct? Yeah, duh. Eight. Eight. Uh, so you line up a shot, and you fire. As he is distracted with um, the sheer mild piercing that he has gotten from a horn swoggle, he is just left like his big fat forehead right in your view. And you lovingly extricate his brains and uh, distribute them on the back wall of the ash hole. Um, the sound is definitely large. Or definitely loud and reverberates. And for a second, you think you hear the pandemonium outside stop. And then you hear the sounds of shuffling feet and other things closing in towards um, your the, the, the tavern. You're hearing all signs of noise attracted by the sound of the uh, the musket shot. There's banging that's starting to happen on the, the front door. And instinctively, Glowbones moves another table against it. He says, somebody give me another bag of nails. And you're like seeing that the boards are beginning to loosen with the force of uh, the infected outside trying to push their way in. We should bail while they're going to eat him. Yeah. Agreed. So in well, here, not eat. I mean, murder, uh, murder and eat. Who knows what people on psychotic amounts of ash do? Well, as you can tell yeah. from Pete or uh, Studman here, that ash itself can have some pretty deleterious effects that it can, in certain six, certain uh, cases, turn you into the undead. So it's uh, not good outside. There are, of course, since this is a pirate den, there are multiple kind of exits that are hidden here and there, especially for people that are the faithful for Bassatom. There is a trap door that will worm its way through the under, uh, the seat that worms its way towards the sea caves where worship is held in secret. There's a trap door on the roof that can also give you access to um, maybe get a better lay of the land as well as an old smuggler tunner that was used for uh, taking in barrels of rum uh, towards the, the coastline. So you have three different points that you could try to escape if you really wanted to bail on poor old glow bones. Smuggler tunnel? I love a good tunnel. Let's go. We're going to bail on him? Really? We should take him with us at the very least. I agree. Unless Glowbones wants to go down with the ship, in which case, you know, that's his right as a bartender to go down with the bar. <laughs> we no longer have a sh we no longer have a cook. Uh and Glowbones would be a good backup cook. So I vote that we uh drag him with us. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Come on, Glowbones. We're going down the tunnel. Come on. Just tries to pick him up. I don't know how strong, big I am in comparison to Glowbones. He, he is a very large man, so you just lovingly hug him and try to pull him towards the tunnel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
That sounds I, right. I'm going to walk behind them and kind of just bounce them with my belly towards the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> so, Glowbones at first uh, protests and he says, this, this is my livelihood. This is my establishment. I built this with my own two hands and you'll be damned before I, I leave this place. In the middle of this, a hand juts its way through the door. It just punches a hole. And it begins to scrabble, pulling the boards on the inside of the door. And he looks at it and goes, oh, fuck that. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Good man, Glowbones. So not only yeah. are you going to get a moderately incompetent cook, when you uh, first enter into this tunnel, Glowbones, even being in the rear, provides such a luminous glow that you can actually see just barely enough without a torch through this tunnel. It's a little bit more wide than it is tall, meant to roll barrels as um, it was a way to kind of do piracy on piracy to try to evade whoever was imposing local tariffs, whether it be the pirate lords themselves or a nobleman or someone that was uh, you know, monitoring the ins and outs of uh, goods coming to Bastion. And so you see that this tunnel hasn't been maintained very well. In fact, there are parts where the internal scaffolding the supports have rotted away and are kind of leaning in precariously spots where it looks like it can cave in at any time and you can hear the kind of seismic activity of just so many feet swarming the building and there are these clods of dirt just falling from the ceiling of this if what you crawl for a good 10, 15 minutes, it's hard to kind of tell as you're moving very slowly. There is a lot of just detritus, a couple of skeletons down here. Uh, you're not sure what their story was. Um, some very upset moles. You're not sure why there even be moles on an island, but at this point, things are too chaotic <laughs> to ask questions. And you emerge at a... Uh, kind of a hidden fake door exit that leads into this kind of the dilapidated docks on the north side of Bastion. You can see that yes, this is where you've even parked your little sloop, um, and there um, is, and it doesn't seem like there is anyone that is congregating. Most of the other ships um, looks like they have kind of been crashed into each other or burned or scuttled in the chaos, but your little ship. Um, uh, or you start your little dinghy has been left um, unmolested. I'm glad they didn't molest my dinghy. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> I am glad that Darth Onslaught is in one piece. <clears throat> Darth Onslaught, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Friends. <laughs> New adventures in Bassetan's glory await us. Shall we be on our way? We shall. Agreed. So from here, you can either go back to Long Watch to the west. You can row. Oh, your next islands are a an exhausting road, to be honest, in a dinghy. You can uh, go due north from here uh, across uh, the bay and uh, berth at the edge of the boneyards. You can also go east from here and you can launch uh, Ralph's Spite. If you really wanted to spend multiple hours rowing, you could go to the northeast from here and go to Dreadwater. Dreadwater sounds safe. I like the name of... <laughs> yeah. I like the name of Ralph's Spite. Like, that um, that sounds like an island named for good reasons. Like, for <laughs> with, with good intent in its heart. <laughs> well, being as yeah, you've been a long-term resident of this area, or at least it's your origins, or at least maybe a little more worldly, Hornswoggle, you'll remember that Ralph Spite gained its name where Captain Ralph Kingfisher Esteban was marooned after a vicious mutiny. He died, but he got his revenge when his rotten corpse poisoned the groundwater and triggered a plague that killed the first wave of settlers. 
So it's basically <laughs> been an isle of ill repute, mostly home to ale houses and gambling dens, since no one did serious infrastructure building uh, due to the initial plague. Um, so Plague Island or a couple of hours to Dreadwater. Um, or we could go back to, yeah, I don't know. You, you, you could also go north to the Boneyards. Boneyards! Um, <clears throat> it sort of okay, seems appropriate um, actually, that, we, that we take the bone after John's dick to the Boneyards, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Um, actually, Ian, uh, I yes. don't have an ability to do this. I just want to, I would like <laughs> just... to, um, I would like to, you before. <laughs> I would like to be a good person. No. Uh, <laughs> say, like, I'm waiting for like uh, Ashki to like cue up the laugh track and like the nope. awkward sadness and silence, baby. So I had in a sad foghorn, please. Uh, I would like to attempt to commune with the will of Basaton uh, and get some I, I feel like we have carried out the will of Basaton on this island I would like to look around to see if there's any clicky clackies crawling along the beach near our dinghy that might be omens or if there's not I will uh, fall to my knees and you know pray fervently for some kind of vision or guidance Absolutely. I'd say go ahead and make a spirit test. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the devil's luck, actually. All right. Cool. Uh, I rolled a nat one the first time. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I was like, you know what? As I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to talk to my god, and that one, not going to do it. Uh, my re-roll was a nat 40. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, as all with love, you know, any type of great <laughs> old ones, uh, their will can be very fickle. And so at first you feel this burdening sense of ire and like odious loathing as you initially beseech. And somehow, you know, as you kind of pull the skeins of fate, you somehow there's a little bit of a capricious whim and you feel Basatan's benevolence uh, wash over you and uh, a little fiddler crab uh, somehow is it walks out onto the edge of the dinghy and uh, blinks its little beady eye stalks at you. It clacks a bit and it points in the direction of Dreadwater. I was picturing it in my head, head, and it's adorable. <clears throat> um, yep, Dreader Ho. I, I, um, <laughs> uh, I reach over and uh, grab a little piece of dangling flesh from Burnout from his wound, <laughs> just kind of rip it off. Sorry. And I give it to the fiddler crab. Thanks. I, I wasn't using that anymore anyway. He said it was just Praise gonna... Basaton, my friend. Praise, Praise Basaton. Praise Basaton that I won't get gangrene now. <laughs> Need your flesh to the fish. Why did it have to come off the left side of my face, though? Because that was my attractive side, and now it's not going to look right. Um, you know what? The... Everybody in the party is gorgeous by comparison to me. Remember, <laughs> I am canonically the ugliest man in the island chain. So it is. Um, I, am, I, yeah. I am truly fearsome to behold, and uh, y'all should feel pretty. I'm gorgeous. We feel hashtag blessed. To be... uh, there's a song by the Fat Boys called "Big and Beautiful." It just it's just playing wherever I go. Big. And beautiful, the fat boys are beautiful. You know, we were making Austin Powers jokes before we started playing this game, and I feel like the obvious uh, Austin Powers 2 reference should be made here, but I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're welcome.
<laughs> so as you are beginning to row your dinghy to the northeast, you know that this is a, a dinghy is, is meant really for kind of um, very small inter aisle travel that probably from here, depending on the currents, it may be over a 10 to 12 mile row at minimum uh, before you would Jesus. start to, to see the edge of Dreadwater, but you know there must be something there if, if import if uh, Bassatan is kind of nudging you in that direction. Yeah. As one of us bring you... a fiddle, maybe they got a fiddle, or maybe a squeeze a uh, box. Are you I gonna have... fiddle in your dinghy? Do we have a meat grinder? Because I have a monkey. Mm. Oh, I don't have a flute. Or Never like mind. a a meat grinder. That's or whatever the, the. Do we have a meat grinder? Because I, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna make monkey sausage. No, no, like, that's yeah. The guy, organ grinder. The guy I, I get the reference you're making. It's called an organ uh, grinder. Yeah, yeah, not um, a meat grinder though. Good. I oh, love that. Parrot, I thought you put uh, organs in it, Charles. My uh, my <laughs> parrot can sing uh, ICP, but only the Great Malenko. <laughs> the song, Doing your modern the references. Mm -hmm. You know, it's there are worse ICP songs. I'll say that much. <laughs> How do magnets work? No one knows. <laughs> no one knows. Yeah, miracles might be the low point. Yeah. <laughs> So as you are beginning to you know, row in this direction, taking turns, you can see in the far distance there is a, a very large ship. This is to the to the far west of you. You can see the outline. It's hard to tell exactly what ship it is. Oh, wait, does anyone here have a spyglass? I don't useful. think so, but let me double check my in armor mm -hmm. Oh, it says here I don't have a hat. Fuck that. And I'm wearing the uh what it, what what was it called? Bridget? Cavalier. The cavalier. Cavalier. I am wearing a cavalier. Fuck that no hat shit. Yeah. I, I don't have a spyglass, um, but I have a fishing rod. I also have a fishing rod. <laughs> yeah, but do you have a bucket? Well we can go fishing on the way there. No, but I have a backpack that has, as it says, 10 normal sized items. Oh, oh. could yeah. one of those normal sized items be a spyglass? Because I don't have that back. No, it it I, lets you I, know how much you can you can carry right. since weight, there's a little bit of a weight system in the game. Mm -hmm. And I only have a comically large spyglass that no one can actually use. So do you have a scope on your on your gun? No, it's a musket. Okay. All right. Worth a shot. <laughs> laser sight on your musket i love that um it's very okay. funny <laughs> so as you you look at this ship in the distance it's a little bit hard to tell what exactly it is uh if does anyone want uh actually everyone make a presence check if someone gets high enough you might be able to make out the colors Be a difficult check uh, since you're at a far distance. Nine. Uh, I, I got a 17. I got a seven. Got a nat 16 uh, minus 15. So, uh, Fasinus, as you are, are looking at it, being a, a person of the faith, you do notice that the colors belong to the Inquisition. Uh, you all see Fastinus's lip curl up in like complete derision and hate. Uh, <clears throat> there's no doubt in your mind that if you guys were on a ship with any sort of weapon, he would immediately be like, "All right, we're attacking that, we're attacking that ship on our dinghy." <laughs> well, I don't know. We could, we could, you know, we could sneak up on their rear with our dinghy and. <laughs> I mean, actually, them, that is this mine. is Pirate Borg, and th how do pirates get ship? They steal ship. Yeah, so they steal historically it, yeah. speaking, uh, what made the pirates so terrifying for everyone is that they were in tiny, fast boats, and they were better sword fighters than 
anyone else because they were all former military. And so they would, their little tiny dinghies and sloops would uh, catch up to your big boat before you had a chance to like even realize you needed your cannons and they'd board you and kill everyone. Uh, so historically speaking, let's it would make sense. It. Our stats well, speaking, let's, think about let's like, not do that. Yeah, Look, we can say this is a more character game. game. If if ah, thanks, thanks, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, like funny, this, though. this is Borgborg. If this were like any other um, OSR game, if this even qualifies as that, um, I would say go for it. But this is the brutalist of them all. Um, so I don't know. I think we'd all die. But if you guys want to go for a TPK, I mean. Sounds refreshing to me. I don't want to go for a TVK, but follow me on this. We're doing what three sessions of Pirate Borg or four? Yeah, we are going to we're play until we, we get to some type of story conclusion. So I feel like the high water mark for this should be us stealing a ship. I mean, that's what pirates do. That's true, but we are yeah, down yeah. one party member, you know. That's, we don't yeah, have a but... Kevin. It's the weekend, and weekends are for pirate shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Just saying. We should... <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> Not in-game! It doesn't have to be Wednesday in-game. It's the weekend if you believe hard enough, John. Yeah. It's the weekend somewhere, John. <laughs> you and your Gregorian calendar? Come on. <laughs> what do you, use that that one? One? <laughs> what do you have against Greg's and Ian's? Uh, Ian's, not much. Greg's, however, you know what you fucking did. I do. I used to work for a guy named Greg Gooch. Should we leave this out and edit? We've we've made the Gregorian decision then, Greg or Ian. We've Wait. decided in, in favor of Ian. There we go. So are you wanting to change course and go after the Inquisition's ship? No. Basaton has given us an order. I right. as much as All I right. want to attack the Inquisition, I think we should stay the course for Dreadwater. All right, but it's but we I point my saber at him and I just go soon. Soon. Not now. So yeah. it's more puzzling and more curious the fact that the Inquisition is this far away from their home port. Uh, they're on the far south side of the sea, actually on the continent itself. Um, that's where their headquarters is, the Citadel. It's right at the mouth of Lake Maracaibo. So this is a astronomically far way as away for them to be, even for you know pretty far away from the vice royalty of New Spain. Hmm. So you continue to row towards um, your destination. It's exhausting. You are having to change rowers every so often because it is a terribly long journey. Uh, luckily, though, Glowbones uh, has a couple flasks on him that you slowly burn as you are uh, churning. It gets uh, so night falls. It gets very cold, and you see a layer of fog kind of roll on the waters. You're luckily. It's, it's pretty lucky that the waters is very calm. You're not sure if this is the influence of Basatan or not, but if there were any types of high winds or any type of significant weather, this would be an absolute perilous journey being so far away from coast. After this terribly long row, your arms are this burning of lactic acid. You see the very edge of dread water. Unlike the pretty cleared islands that you are used to, you can see them from a distance. It is verdant and lush, even in the very low light. Glowbones himself kind of acts as, a, as like a little lantern as you are sailing in this ocean of darkness. 
the the thing that you notice though as you get closer to dread water is that the water gets even more placid and still just almost as this it is just a sheet of ice but it's just utterly calm and still water it almost seems like the closer you get to the island itself the more quiet things get and you don't even really hear the, the slapping of the oars sounds more quiet even the constant chattering of glow bones just seems to be a little bit muted as you pull closer and closer to it so after a while you land on the shore there is a sandy beach and then just immediately after the sandy beach is just wild jungle and thickets you could hear slight muted sounds like a little bit as if someone had just watered your ears with cotton but you can tell that there's still like the clicks and the hisses of various weird insects and fauna and other things in the thrall of night but it is quiet from this beach landing you can see that in the far distance towards the middle of this island and this island is relatively uh, compared to uh, Bastion. Uh, it is about this. Let's, let me just verify here. Um, it is about twice the size of Bastion. You think that at the, you can see just over the tops of these palm trees and other type of jungle trees, the very edges of some type of stone building. Well, I think uh, <clears throat> better stone building than just like open jungle, right? I'm team stone building. <clears throat> As it is the thing that is drawing our attention, I agree. <laughs> yeah, what they said. Let's do that. Stone building. Does anyone have a machete or anything? I do have a machete, friends. Hooray! Oh, Guess who's going first? No. I Him hand and my then, machete um, to someone else. I take the and machete. Then, and... <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and since Glowbones is, I don't know, are we going to leave him with the boat or are we going to take him with us as a lantern? Lantern? Come on, we can't leave Glowbones behind. It's not like you yeah, stuck him in a barrel of rum until the next time we play. <laughs> okay. All right. Saddle up, glow bones. We're going in. So as you begin to penetrate in through this <laughs> thick, dark forest, as soon as you step into the jungle, there's almost like a air, almost like a bubble popping, and all at once you hear this terrible cacophony of the jungle, this thunder around you. You hear all kinds of creatures you don't even see, wild birds, you hear snakes slithering, you hear all of those insects that were muted before but in this terrible riot of sound. As you begin to chop your way through the jungle, you can see that this thing is primordial and it, for good reason why people have just avoided this island. It was rumored that heathens had lived here, that there was um, a people that had built strange temples and buildings to gods that had been long forgotten but were held in terrible esteem for very long. There are places like this that are um, lost islands or intentionally unmapped places throughout the Caribbean and especially the dark Yucatan as well, uh, where there is there are these great temples to be plundered, but at great cost. As you are chopping through the undergrowth, somebody roll me a D6. Two. Okay. And um, everyone roll me perception checks. Or see, presence checks. <laughs> two. Oh, Eleven. Yeah, me too. Fifteen. I also rolled a two. Okay, hey, Esther, as you are following behind the machete-cleared path, 
you have glow bones behind you and you see this kind of faint luminous light wash over things you've avoided a lot of different creatures but you see on this path up ahead that's being cleared a something that first looks like a very thick root sticking across the ground but it moves a bit it's leathery it's crenulated and you're very sure with kind of like this sinking gulp that it is a crocodile hmm. a large ancient crocodile hey pirate bros we got a huge croc up ahead um do we feel like croc fighting <laughs> um, i i do not think that is our best move i mean we outnumber <laughs> it we can take it <laughs> well we outnumber a t-rex too you know right we can take a t-rex i like your logic yes <laughs> no it's probably a horrible idea my character will insist that we fight it because that's the kind of guy he is but i agree with everyone we should avoid this <clears throat> uh fast fast kind of grips uh burnout's ear like a petulant child mm-hmm we're not here for the croc. What? But it's there. It's I said right. no. I just want to do the. Oh. What do you think of the boots? The the luggage we can make out of its tail Mr. alone. Do not encourage it. Burn out. It would be, a, it would be a jungle for me. <laughs> All right. Through the jungle. Through the jungle. So I don't are you on a hey, fucking croc. John, you live in Texas. Like I, you guys didn't slander. necessarily, but um, <laughs> like you, you're big on snakeskin boots down there, right? I what sort of demented heard, lunatic? Yeah, what kind of demented lunatic invented like snakeskin boots? How many snakes do you have to kill to get one pair of boots out of them? And depending on the size of the snake, just one, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I guess so, that depends on whether you can fit your foot in the snake, you know. Uh, I I have a little snake whom I love very much, and it makes me sad to think of him being on my foot. Um, <laughs> although I did once watch a snake strike at a mouse, miss, and bite itself, and then try to crush itself. Um, <laughs> he was the ding dong though. Um, <clears throat> don't step on the croc, please. He was polite. Are you wanting to deviate and take a path that's going to take you longer to get to that stone building? Or are you but wanting to you... involve an eldritch crocodile in our path? Yeah, I think that would probably be wise. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, how big of a detour was... does it have to be? Well, they are predators. But what I'm getting at is if you're wanting to take a longer detour or if Fastness wanted to use his silence oh, ability. Yeah. Mm. Well, I do have silence. Um, silence isn't going to help us with a critter that mostly hunts through feeling tremors and smell, though, is kind of the counter to that. So we'd be silent by that late. I didn't say it was a good idea. I just wanted to know what you were doing. No, we should detour. Okay. We're detouring. So you begin to slash and uh, carve a different path through the forest. As you are beginning to go through, uh, since you are leading the front of the party burnout, roll me D6. D6. All right. That's your tarantula, Jack. Six. Not a That's tarantula. How many tarantulas are on you now. <laughs> you wanted scorpions. That's a good joke, but also I kind of hope it's tr the truth. <laughs> and if it's going to be anything, I wanted scorpions. <laughs> As you are beginning to 
go through and kind of deviate from this rising kind of hill where you're you, you have this giant crocodile you meander more towards this thicker undergrowth where it gets even heavier you can see that the canopy itself just seems almost fused together as if the trees are either intertwined or there are is a a vine system that seems to bind and choke everything together. Vines dangle down from the canopy top, constantly getting in your way, wrapping around your machete and just slowing your progress. It uh, even just oh, kind of obscures the faint light from glow bones. And it seems as if like the more you're moving forward through this patch, it's just getting thicker before it's getting thinner. And it's all just like you're almost moving the giant cobwebs, but it's just vines. And you'd almost swear that you feel like they're almost slithering around you. But surely that just is just how it feels, more like a perception thing. Um, and you notice that, no, the vines actually are tugging on your machete uh, roll me a strength check change the die 15 plus one plus one 16 so it wraps like these vines wrap around your machete and pull you are able to pull your machete back and slice through a handful of them and you hear slithering up around you and all of a sudden vines shoot down at all of you and try to wrap around you like an arm a neck or something else i need everyone to roll me an agility check oh no oh. 17 agilities okay I hear Ooh, a 17. Oh, no. no. I want to use a devil's luck. Got a modifier. Ooh, Do that's it. a 21 with my modifier. And if you rolled so well, would you also like to roll for glow bones? Uh, sure. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to repeat that performance, but uh, the answer is regrettably no. That's a 10 for glow bones. Okay. And Esther, what did you get with your devil's luck? Um, with the devil's luck, 17, thank God. I had won the first okay. time. Uh, so when you use your devil's luck, uh, the vines move away from you as if they know something is terribly wrong with you, Esther. But what about you, Fastinus? Uh, I'm good. Super good. I, did, I rolled super good. Okay, what did you that. roll? <laughs> I... What does a <laughs> negative one get me? Um, it gets you vines. Eaten. Yeah, eaten by a tree, I think. Okay. Oh, well, we've all seen the Evil Dead. I have a negative two. John, you've <laughs> yes. seen the Evil Dead, yes? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, Controversial. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, a, not something that needed to have been filmed for mass consumption. Uh, and just to no. remind me, Burnout, what did you say you rolled? Oh, um, Burnout rolled a 17. That's what I thought. Okay, so we had two 17s and a 21. And, all right. So a lot of you um, are pulling these vines off, but you hear the sounds of choking coming from glow bones and from Fastenus, as these vines wrap around your throat and limbs and begin to pull you up into the canopy. The canopy above you just begins to violently shake, and the trees around you are beginning to sway with the force of the vines pulling you up. So we will roll, uh, we'll start with initiative. Uh, we're going to um, who? Someone roll me d6 to see who goes first. The vines or you? All right. That's I'm not five. rolling anymore. I'm, I'm bad five. at it. <laughs> so the top of the initiative, the party gets to go first. So Fastenus, you are stuck fast in this snare of vines. To your horror, you realize that this thing is a collective of hive vines, said to be one of the largest organisms in the dark Caribbean. These networks of fast-moving vines entangle and 
juice their prey. So your best course of action right now is try to uh, roll a strength check to break free from these lions before they pull you up into the canopy and begin to juice you. <laughs> That's a nat 19, baby. All right. Beans be praised. Uh, as you begin to pull up, you have such mass that you hear the trees groaning, the canopy groaning with the effort to pull you up. And there's this tight sound as if ropes being stretched to their maximum. And they begin to snap one by one. And you fall on your ass hard. Um, how much, uh, do I take any... Um. Man, I hate to point this out because you're being nice to me right now, but um, with my weight falling any distance, not great for my bones? No, but I am just going to insult your pride by having you fall upon some type of, uh, you know, conical-shaped rock uh, that lodges itself unpleasantly upon your fall. Does it have a flared base? No. Oh, I might I might need some help later then. Jen. <laughs> some devil's luck. <laughs> that, 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 devil's that's, lucky. That's why we brought that's why we brought Steamboat Boat Willie along so that he can help you with that. His little monkey hands will fit perfectly. Yeah, yeah exactly. As uh, so you fall and you plummet and you hear you almost swear you hear the vines making a hissing sound as they retreat and slurp back up into the canopy. Uh, next in initiative is um, I keep wanting to call you Rap Scallion because I really liked your your whole rat reference. <laughs> Horn Swoggle. Rat Sky uh, was very yeah. good. So, <clears throat> so you yeah. see the glow bones um, is completely ensnared. So from where we are, you said that this is like a a hive or a nest of like mm -hmm. a bunch of these things. From where we are, can we see like a central mass of them or is it just movement in the trees? That's a great point because as glow bones is being pulled up into the canopy, you see this gnarled mass of tentacles as if it is 20 different octopuses in the thralls of mating just above you uh, with these tentacles. Vines. Exactly. That is yeah. what it looks like. And it gets worse I'm the more take... like glow bones is being hoisted up. Yeah. I'm going to try and save glow bones. What I'm going to do is um, I have a flintlock and I am going to draw a bead on that bad boy and shoot at it. Now, since I'm using a firearm and it's got like a 30 meter range, I think, so it should be good. Um, does that check strength or what? It's going to check agility and this is going oh, to be okay, cool. a reduced um, uh, check because your fire is going to a large static target. Okay, cool. Let's Give me a... Well, uh, not great is the answer. That's seven with my modifier plus one is an eight. That is the exact threshold that I set for a oh giant wad. Was eight. Hell so yeah. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Give me a eight. Wow. Well, that works in your favor. Or, uh, so it does. All right. Give me your damage. All right. I have to roll 2d4 for that, which means I need to use the. Auto or I can also I can, can roll for you if that is easier. No, I think I got it. Let's see, that's three and one for a combined four points. All right. So good news and bad news. Good news is mm -hmm. you fire into the mass. And um, well, actually, more bad news than good news. You fire into the mass, and you do four points of damage to it. You see a, a whole bunch of the extra uh, vines that were beginning to still quest in your direction slurp back up. Glow bones is still suspended, being pulled up. 
um, but you um, are reduce the amount of vines in the area. The other not good part of that is that your shot is extremely loud and echoes across the entire island. There is for one second, I, it's just enough for like a good solid heart thump. There is utter silence and then all the noise resumes. That's but fine. Vine... Let them know we're here and ripping off shots. <laughs> Next in initiative is you, Esther. All right. Um, I'm going to pull out my gun. <laughs> should I be keeping my... track of gonna... bullets? I... <laughs> you should be. It's um, So actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to at least modify Charles's <laughs> to go from eight shots to seven. Okay. But yes, because yeah, ammunition is limited, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're going to have no place to re-up your bullets. All right. I wanted to make sure. All right, I'm going to fire. Because you gun. have used two good shots so far. Well, this one isn't one of them. This is an eight. An eight was what you needed to hit. Oh, crap. Yeah, right. Oh, God. That's awesome. No, Obasaton. Yeah. Obasaton. Yes. Obasaton. Obasaton. How kind of miss your uh, shit. We should write an entire hymn book. Um, <laughs> I, I am on it. It's a five. Five. Your click so, black. You've already put a, a shot through this mass, and as you have fired your musket through this as well, you see that uh, one of like two of the different vines that have, are hoisting up glow bones snaps, and he's just dangling precariously by his ankles. And um, the vines are really struggling to pull him up at this point. You see that the rest of the uh, superfluous vines that were coming down towards the rest of the party are also slurp ups, leaving just glow bones being pulled up. So the rest of you could just leave glow bones and retreat uh, without being attacked further by these vines. Oh, no. But before you can do that, it is burnout's turn. We can't leave Glow Bones behind. He's part of the team now. We don't mm -hmm. leave a man behind. I pull out my saber with one hand. I put the machete in the other hand. And I just start wailing away on as many vines as I can. We do sometimes you... leave people behind, though. Just like to yeah. clarify, we do do that. No, we never left yeah. a man behind before. <laughs> It's never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we are a one for one on leaving people behind so far. Can we answer oh, a flashback here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Or, or like, or like okay. the arrested development narrator. The arrested development narrator. They oh, yeah. had in fact left people, people behind. <laughs> Go ahead and roll me your attack, Burnout. All right. We might leave Globones behind. <laughs> what did you roll? A three. Am I adding one to that for strength? Because yes. it's not yes, going to matter. <laughs> No, I have no, a devil's luck left. What time is it? It's um, it's not quite eleven yet. I'm gonna burn my other devil's luck. Yeah, and I'm gonna switch dice because you know what you just did to us. I don't need to use you. I've got this one. There is a terrible shrilling of birds as you burn your devil's luck, and it 19. echoes to like a rolling shrill screech of birds that goes across the entire island uh, with that you're able to dramatically leap into the air and with one blade attacking each of the the vines still holding him uh drop glow bones very unsanctimoniously on his noggin from the tree um it makes a large muffled thump sound and for a second, he just he just lays there, and you're not sure if he's broken his neck or anything. But you watch his hands slowly reach towards his pants, pull out the flask, and he just drains the last bit of it. <laughs> then he stands up. and I, uh, I, I hug him, and I go, oh, good. I thought I Gwen Stacy'd you. <laughs> he uh, looks at you, looks at the flask, and he says, I should have brought a third. 
but he begins to pick up the severed vines and he's like, well, at least this will make for decent rope. So between the Ashby, amount... What, what was the horrifying sound from that one panel in the original Spider-Man where she died? Was it like a crack or something like that? I don't remember. Where it like she drops out of sight and then you just see like the spider web go tight and you see this awful sound that they did. It's like a crack or like crack or something. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, he fucking hung Gwen Stacy accidentally, but right. Know. Anyway. So, yeah. So uh, he collects about 25 feet of rope worth of uh, vines worth of rope excellent the rest of the mass of vines this moves like a nest of snakes and it just slithers further deep down into the thick of the forest or the thick of the jungle from here your path gets easier now that a lot of what was choking the undergrowth and the path in front of you has uh, fled. Your path is a lot easier. In about an hour's time, you hack your way to the beginning of a plaza. You see that there are stones that have been laid almost like there was once a like a, a full courtyard, but over time, vines and roots and other things have just uprooted a lot of these blocks, but nothing else really grows upon them except for patches of very thick moss or very flaky lichen. This uh, extends further into the jungle and meets the base of what looks to be like a temple. The temple itself looks to be mostly intact from the outside, although it has seen some significant damage. There are chunks missing out of the side of this stone edifice. It looks like it had been assaulted by a cannon blast at some point. And there are pock marks along the side as if at one point it was fired upon by various volleys of muskets. You know that... A lot of these temples have been attempted to been raided by pirates to try to get their ancient plunders. All the tales of gold and artifacts and ancient powers and things. Uh, so you're, from this viewpoint, you're not sure if this was just assaulted from the distance from a ship or if at one point someone had raided this temple. So perhaps there are people that are still use this as a place of worship or perhaps it has been utterly looted but from here you're maybe 100 150 feet away from this and it just stands silently and quiet and once you step foot onto this uh courtyard that ghostly weird quietude kicks back in as if you just stepped into another bubble of silence john what's your parrot's name um, <clears throat> what is my parent's name? Violent K. Hmm. Violent K? Mm-hmm. All right. We should That's send, uh, Violent K. Isn't. Yeah. Violent K and, and, uh, you know, um, Steamboat Willie to, uh, mm -hmm. maybe check out, like, the situation before we go into that clearing. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Only if you want a spinoff episode where it's a buddy comedy of Violent K and Steamboat Willie, like getting into <laughs> shenanigans. Uh, and, I definitely and... want that. But yeah. Oh boy, let's go, <laughs> Violent K. Let's hobble on in there and see what's going on. What do you say, friend? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It'll be fun. I'm laughing about it too. Ha -ha! All right. That's one of the so, best Mickey Mouse ha ha's I've ever heard. Oh boy. So you send in both of them or one of them? Uh, they are in a whirlwind adventure. Um, yeah, yes. both of them. It's a buddy comedy. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Fine. Steamboat Willie is definitely not a cop. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> and what are the specific instru- instructions you were giving them? Uh, go in. Let's check, just say go, go. Yeah, go check the door and come back would be a. Have a look around. Yeah, look. We're at. We're we're they're scouting. They're seeing if there's anyone in there. If there's anything well, dangerous. The so you have an open doorway. There's no closed door. So I'm wondering if you are telling him to go in, and if so, how far? Poke their little heads in. Just the tip. Yeah. Yeah. Just the tip. Just put the tip right. in. Feel around. Take it back out. Put it back in, feel around a little bit more, see if you find anything good, um, and let us know when you get too excited. All right, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Charge your copay for that. So you send them forward, and the entrance of the temple is just utterly pitch black. Like it's again, this is still the dead of night. The, um, the you were just beginning to see a little bit of sunlight on the horizon from your long trek through the jungle, but the mouth of it is just pure darkness. Uh, both Willie and Kay slip into the darkness, neither one of them immediately come out. My monkey, well, that ain't good. Oh, no. I feel, really... I feel bad for having that idea now. Maybe maybe they're All having right. a great time and that's why they didn't come back out. Maybe we should knock before we, you know, disturb them. Um, yeah, let's uh, I guess go check that out with our glowing buddy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Weapons on the right. As you, as you shout uh, for Willie and you shout for Kay, your voices are getting muffled by that pertinential silence, and your loudest shout is just nothing but kind of a pathetic whimper, as if this whole place is just exuding this dreadful silence. Ahoy, my friends. It's me, John Baldisberger. Just want to let you know that I have a new book out as of uh, Friday, January 19th, called The Unclean Verses. It's available on Kindle paperback and hardback so check that out if you want to uh, read an extreme version of Dante's Inferno also we would like to thank Bog Wizard for the use of our intro and outro music we'll be back next week to catch a bit more of our pirate brethren in action and until then drink up me hearties yo ho